this is my new clean overhead camera setup for unboxing videos. In this video, I want to talk about why I built it, how I did it and how you can build one yourself. This is a sponsored video, sponsored by Restream. If you are an online creator who is not yet live streaming to maximize your reach, you should definitely check out Restream because they can help you with their Restream Live Studio to get started within minutes. Learn more about the Restream Live Studio using the link in the video description down below and get yourself a $10 Restream credit. First things first though, I consider this all-in-one over-the-head camera setup to be a budget solution. Not to be confused with a no-budget one, but there would definitely be ways to spend more on this than I did. For me, there were two important things which my setup had to have. First of all, it had to be permanent, so I don't have to build it every single time I want to shoot the video. And second, it should be as compact as possible, so I don't have to have a ton of tripods or C-stands in my flat again. Because I want the setup to be permanent and ready to shoot whenever I got a new gadget to unbox, I decided to not build that rig on top of my existing table. Instead, I decided to get a dedicated one for the job. So let's start with the tabletop. The tabletop is from IKEA and has a name I'm not even trying to pronounce. It is 120 by 60 centimeters in size and costs about 30 bucks. I originally wanted to go for an even smaller version, which was only one meter wide, but I then decided on this one because in a later episode, we are going to upgrade this setup to a full fledged live streaming control center and I need a little bit more space on both sides outside the camera view. Attached to a tabletop are four legs with wheels, which costs about 15 bucks each. The reason why I went for those fairly expensive wheel legs is because I want to be able to take my setup, move it out of my office into a different room when I'm not actively shooting on it. As an alternative, IKEA also offers auto legs with the same height for just about five bucks each. Assembling the table was super simple and straightforward as it is to be expected from an IKEA product. That is, as long as you have all the screwdrivers you need on hand. Now onto the probably most expensive part of the setup next to the camera, of course, which is the two Elgato key lights. The two Elgato key lights run you about 200 bucks each. <laughs> The reason I decided to go with those expensive key lights was that, first of all, I wanted a clean setup without having softboxes on their dedicated tripods. And because I already had two key lights from my existing streaming setup, so I just took them. I personally would have loved to just have like one massive light source just on top of the table, which gives an even light. But that would probably be way more expensive and almost impossible to integrate in a table which can be easily moved around. Because the one thing I always struggled most with on my other overhead setups I did for other videos was to get lighting which did not create harsh shadows. With those two fairly big key lights on both sides, I think I did a very good job job in creating an even light which is not casting any harsh shadows from the product on the table. To power the two key lights I installed a power strip on the underside of the table. This allows me to only have one cable I need to plug out of the wall when I'm moving this thing and it also allows me to plug in other gadgets on the table which we will use in the next video when we upgrade this setup. So make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss that video. For the camera mount, I decided to use yet another Elgato product, this time the Elgato Master Mount as well as the Elgato Flex Arm, which both combined cost you about 90 bucks. The solution is fairly sturdy, but if you are planning to use a bigger camera than what I am using, you might want to look into a different solution altogether. This is not because the arm would not be strong enough to hold a heavier camera, it's more like that the entire rig starts to move and wiggle when you bump the table. The easiest and best solution to fix that would be to have a dedicated tripod which is not attached to the table. But as I explained before, I do not want to have that, so it was a table mount. When it comes to audio, I went very basic with this setup and I decided to just plug in my lavalier microphones directly into the camera. 
of course, this will change in the next video when we upgrade this table with a little more advanced audio gear. Speaking of gear, for the camera of my setup, I went for my old Sony 6300, which is a wonderful camera. It records in 4K and is plenty enough for my needs on this setup. The camera is currently set to a height in which the table fills the full view of the camera and thanks to the camera's zoom, we can easily zoom into the products on the table if we need to. Also, the Sony's flip screen is quite useful for once and it allows me to flip it out so I can see exactly what the camera sees, no matter if I'm standing or sitting on the table. So all in all, the perfect setup for some of my planned upcoming videos as well as general unboxing content. If this video inspired you to make your own one, let me know by liking this video or writing a comment. Once more, thanks for Restream to sponsoring this video. Go check them out using the link in the video description down below and get yourself the $10 Restream credit. And also thank you to you for watching till the end. You are one member of the 9% club now because it's only 9% of the people who stay here up until the end card. Speaking of the end card, we are now on the end card. So why don't you click one of those two wonderful videos over here and I'll see you in another video, which is hopefully one of them. I'm Greeny, this is Greenbox. Thanks for watching. Bye.